Belfast is a different city than it was all those years ago. There's such a buzz about it, there's so much excitement. Maybe for the last 10 years, I've just seen a whole redevelopment of the city, you know, everyone's pushing as hard as they can. Every year it's just getting better and better. I feel it is one of the most beautiful cities and has to be the one of the most friendly cities. It's the people I think more than anything and the crack. I'm sure that's a word that a lot of people misconstrue sometimes, but there's plenty, plenty of crack in Belfast. It's just local lingo. What's the crack? What's going on? What's happening? Or it's good crack, is it's good fun. Good fun, good time. Yeah. That's a great crack. That's what great crack is. We're kind of an undiscovered treasure when people do visit. They are so surprised by the wealth that they offer. Belfast is buzzing at the minute. There's lots of new openings and young chefs and young restaurateurs. People are dining out more. We just wanted to give Belfast something they haven't seen before. You know, something fun, casual, and a great dining experience. Our selling point is the kitchen counter, as uh, where you can sit in front of the chefs, watch them work their magic in front of you, and it's just fun. You know, it's like a personal chef's table. The reason the restaurant's called Robinson Cleaver is it actually used to be a very famous department store for Belfast. It closed in 1987 and there's been really nothing here until the past year. There's people coming in and they're saying, you know, I used to work here. I just want to come in just to bring back old memories. That's something we're proud of. We put the terrace outside so you can actually get the view of City Hall and be able to sit outside because I wouldn't say there's too many views like that. Myself and Alain, we met in Paris working in three star Michelin restaurants. So we're trying to bring a bit of that back here, but also Ireland's very famous for you know, the cream and the butter and the richer stuff. So we're trying to mix everything together and make something special. The meat over here is spectacular, the place is amazing. The vegetables are right beside us, you know. Everything's here right on our own doorstep. We want to make something where anyone feels welcome. You know, you've got foodies in one corner, young people going to a concert straight after. People are celebrating an anniversary, so it's kind of casual as we can get it, but still done properly. I just love the fact that there's so much culture in this city, and that's quite a recent thing, only in the last 10 years. The MAC is a brand new art centre. We are the home for the arts in Northern Ireland. We have theatres, galleries, workshop spaces. We have a fantastic cafe and bar. So it's a really big art centre in a really small city. But despite our smallness, we have a disproportionately large number of really, you know, acclaimed and world-renowned artists. We're actually situated right in the middle of the shipyard where Titanic was built. This place was full at that time of 15,000 workers. At the height in the 1930s, they had 30,000 people working here. And it was the lifeblood industry of Belfast. What we like to bring to life in our exhibit is not just the specific story of Titanic, but the story of the shipyard, the people who worked here, and the pride that this had in this part of Belfast. There is something for everybody in the Austin Museum, which is the largest and most popular museum in the city and covers three distinct areas. It has art, it has nature and science, and it has history. Because we're part of the city, we're also part of the city's history. We've tried to reflect that. Recently, we opened the Troubles Gallery, and that's a thought-provoking and interesting exhibition based mostly on photography. It just prompts people to think about the conflict that took place over those 40 years. The pub is the pub of the community. It's where people meet and they drink, they have their fun. Once you cross the front doors of the Duke of York, whether you were a street cleaner for the council or a prime minister, you were treated the same. Everyone knows it and it's always busy. People just stand out in the street and have their paints on the, the cobbled street. There's older bars in Belfast, but we like to say we're, we're one of the original ones, you know. People Puerto Rico, this area, um, it's probably the most vibrant and popular social area of Belfast right now. I think this has been a good addition to it. It's not your, your typical Irish pub. The building's very striking, the combination of authentic Irish music, a chicken restaurant upstairs, and a really good beer garden has made a really good pub. And it's just so typically Belfast, you know, it's rough and ready, but it's really good quality. We've certainly tried to do something innovative and different here, and even if it does look like a building site, come in, you'll find out it isn't. 
building has been here since 1826. The deck core on the inside of the bar is very Victorian. You'll not get a bar like it anywhere in the world. Inside has a lot of snugs. Uh, snugs were put in the bars in the Victorian time for a person of wealth or a lady that want to be seen drinking in public view. It's a great bar to mix in with a cracking panther. That's, that's what it's all about. That's what coming to Belfast is all about.